Welcome. Uh, today we're going to continue with our discussion of value drawing into painting. Last uh, week, you may remember, we set up a high contrast situation, a, 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 mo a light on a model where there was a very strong light and a very strong dark with a range of values in, in between. In fact, the exercise that we set up was six values from dark, almost black, to light. Um, so after doing that, uh, you may ask, is that what we always do? And in fact, you may look at some artists' work and their work always has a range of values from black to light, maybe more than six range of values in between. But the answer to that question is no, that is not what we always do. And it was not my, it is not my intent to tell you that every value we're drawing that we do in order for it to be considered good or in order for the painting to be considered good has to have a strong dark with a range of values to a strong light. In fact, value is a tool we use to gauge what we are actually looking at. So I will approach a situation like this and the question is not how do I paint water, how do I paint trees, but what am I actually seeing? So. Um, sometimes it's helpful to describe what is happening. And this can be the true whether we're looking at a person, a still life, or we're outside. It's a beautiful day. So what is it, what, what type of beautiful day? Well, it's a spring day. So how is spring different than summer? Well, spring tends to be moist and the sunlight is sometimes muted. So today is a beautiful spring day. It's sunny, but it's muted. So the value range is different. And if I want to recreate this, if I'm going to stand here and look at this, that's got to be the number one thing I see. Otherwise, why am I standing here? So, let me show you, let's start at the beginning. Um, here is a painting uh, by an artist named Claude Monet. He was a French Impressionist. And m my suggestion to you is that this painting is, is somewhat similar to what we're seeing today. Um, there's areas of light, there, there's areas of dark, but in fact if we look closely at this painting we'll see that the darkest darks do not go black and the lightest lights really they're, they're more down, they're not quite at the screaming height the way the bright light that was on the model last time was. They're, it's more in this range. So. Um, you might, let me show you, uh, to contrast with this, let me show you a painting also by Monet, which has what I consider a more, uh, a higher range, more like what we set up last week with the light on the model. There's areas of very strong light that go up here. The darks, in fact, go to just about to here, and the middle values, work in between these two. It's a different type of day. It's a day at the height of summer, morning at the height of summer, as, as compared to um, softer light, maybe early afternoon, maybe morning, but it's softer. So that is two examples. You might then ask, well, is that how it's always done? Is it, do, do you still have to have this, whether it's up here or up here, or, I'm sorry, whether it's up here or up here or somewhere in the middle, does it always have to be even? No, again, value is a tool. So let me show you this. This painting is by an artist named George Innes. One of my favorite paintings, painters, uh, painted in the second half of the uh, 19th century. Look at the values in this. The value range. The value range goes from here to maybe here. 
two or maybe three values. He's using value as a tool to create this very evocative um, uh, painting. Here's another one by George Innes where the value range goes from here to maybe about here. Again, a very evocative painting. Um, this is an autumn painting. I love the softness and the mood of it. If you want to see more of George Innes paintings, that's I-N-N-E-S-S, -S, in the lower level at the Art Institute of Chicago, there's a whole George Innes room filled with his paintings. And I recommend you, you see his paintings and, and discover this artist and his skillful and evocative use of value. Let me show you a couple other uses of value. Depending on the mood, um, an artist may create a very simple value painting, but it's high contrast. Here's a here's a um, uh, artist named um, Theodore Rousseau, a French artist who painted in the Fontainebleau flower uh, forest in in France. So notice on this. The value range is very simple. It's this, no range really in between, and right about up here. It's dark and light, maybe a little bit of a value in, in here somewhere. Very, very dramatic, certainly an attention-getting uh, painting, a skillful use of value. Uh, now, let me show you, so that's a dark range. Uh, let me show you a very light range where an artist will use value. And this is also uh, Claude Monet. Uh, to me, it looks like mourning. And the value range, um, he doesn't go shockingly white. He stays more below this, maybe a little brighter between here and here. And his dark as dark doesn't go much below this. It's a very limited value range on the upper end of a value scale. So that's a, um, I uh, showed you full length. Let me show you uh, uh, artists, a painting where the values tend to stay towards the middle. Here's a French artist, Paul Signat, where the value range of a painting like this, the lights are somewhat in here, maybe a little bit brighter. The darks, maybe maybe just a tiny bit darker, but the lights, the, the values stay in the middle value range in, in this painting. And a couple more, if you'll bear with me. Here's a... a, a, a a uh, painter who, a uh, painting where uh, I would suggest that this painting is also somewhat similar to what we're looking at today. It's more of an extended middle range. The lights, the whites, don't go much above this. They certainly go to, don't go to a, sh a glaringly bright, bright, bright light. And the darks don't go this far. The darks stay here. So this painting has a value range between here and here. Um, and, oh, I want to show you this painting too. So it's very similar to the high contrast painting we looked at. Um, this, is, this is by an artist, um, Camille Pissarro, where there's strong light and there's strong dark and there's more of a middle value, but it's not an even gradation. So it's more of a high contrast, more of an intensity getting painting where he goes from here to here to about between here and here. Uh, maybe he just about touches on that in places. This is my discussion of value. How it's easy to see in paintings how an artist uses value to convey what he's looking at and what he's feeling. And now we're going to do a value drawing to convey this situation today, which as I have indicated, the darkest darks don't go much below this, and the lightest lights don't go up this far. They stay maybe between here and here. I'm going to see if I can show you a value drawing. It's a good way to enter into a, a painting. So my tools again for this are, are the charcoal 
I'm going to start with uh, a softer, less. Um, last time I covered the whole paper and went to the eraser and, and created a high contrast right away. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stick today uh, first uh, with uh, my eraser and my softer charcoal to see if I can convey this scene. Now again, when confronted with a big wide scene, a viewfinder is helpful to look through to say, how do I want to compose uh, my, my picture? Uh, I, I, I put it in the format of my paper and I look through it. Now, one thing I like about what I'm looking at right now that I, I think in a painting um, will be very nice is the soft blush uh, of that spring green around this tree right here. So I'm, I'm going to see if that'll work and if I can do a value painting of a of, of, uh, value drawing of this situation. I'm going to sort of feel out the situation a little bit. And week I was really putting in the elbow grease to bring out the light so even even my light is going to somewhat it's going to have a, 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 a lesson it's going to have some attention to it being brought down from a bright glaring white um, I'll see if I can not bring out a subtle light because that's, that's what my interest in is. Yeah. See if I can.
One thing that is helpful, I'll use a mirror to um, help me see things to get out of the uh, same way I may be seeing something. And it's a useful tool, a mirror.
Now I want to um, look at uh, things here and I want to show you. So this is the value study that we did uh, last week, very dark to very light. So I want you to see that even the very, very lightest parts of this drawing do not go to white and the darkest darks do well maybe I'm off just a little bit here let's soften that a little bit um, do not go to the darkest black the, the values stay in about here so I'm working from here to maybe from here to here um, and and even uh, yes so that is a, a value drawing of this landscape um, now if if you have a little more time um, what I want to do now is move into painting to see if I can paint this very soft situation um, so we're going to uh, take the drawing it was a very good uh, helpful uh, study I'm going to put it right there and uh, we're going to see if I can start uh, painting with this so I, I've got my paint thinner right here and I, I use a turpentoid and uh, I have my palette uh, squeezed out um, so I'm going to use uh, this is a cadmium yellow medium now um, names really mean nothing uh, it's really you got to look at it so uh, when I was using a different brand uh, this color was comparable to their cadmium yellow light um, this company's cadmium yellow light is way way bright and um, it tends to glitz things out and again this is not a high contrast painting so I think I can do what I need to do with this this is yellow ochre this is cadmium red medium um, I wasn't sure I, I, I squeezed out some alizarin crimson uh, burnt umber. This is the same yellow. I, I mix it over because I'm be mixing my green, so I squeeze some over here. This is a cobalt blue, and this is an ultramarine blue. So I want to see how this works for my palette uh, today. Uh, I'll demonstrate a little bit. Um, please feel free to watch as long as you'd like, and um, and I'm going to get started. I, I, I tend to wear gloves when I paint, so I'm going to put on my gloves. Oh, you know what? I tend to have a canvas when I paint. Uh, so I'm going to get a canvas as well. And um, it's uh, uh, fairly large. Uh, and um, this. Um, it has a tan, it's, it's sort of a, a dull uh, uh, tan uh, background, uh, the ground that I'm painting on. And we'll see if I can uh, see what we can do here.
folks, here it is, the good, the bad, the ugly. You can see I've got a project here on my hands. I want to work on this this afternoon. I hope this value drawing into painting is instructive and can help to motivate you as well to get outside and paint the landscape and see the values. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a wonderful day. Be safe. Be well. Be inspired. Thank you for being here today.